All right, here we are for round three. So our final round of our tournament. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play first. We're on the die roll. Don't know what our opponent is playing. Innocent fishes. Um, I think this is a, a totally reasonable hand. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep. We uh, we have thoughtsies, so we can we can you know get some information about what our opponent is playing on turn one if we really want to. But my thought is that I'm likely gonna actually use that on turn two. Uh, my my plan is to play a forest in the hierarch on turn one. Um, this way, if our opponent is playing something like Burn, we don't shock ourselves and Thought sees him without, uh, you know, any, uh, we have, you know, prior knowledge. If Obviously, if our opponent is playing Burn, we're not going to want to make that play. So here, you know, we get a little bit more information to see, you know, if we do want to use our Thought sees. And it's, there's not that many decks where I really feel like the need to, uh, to Thought sees immediately, so... You're going to get a lot of value out of you know being able to accelerate your mana and and play, uh, play you know like a, a two drop and a one drop next turn and then uh, you know continue to have that hierarch in play, in addition to the value of not being committed to the, that line of play, uh, if you do run into a deck where you don't want to be spending your life total like that. This, of course, assumes that our opponent is just, you know, here at all. I had a little bit of time prior to this round uh, to watch some, some League of Legends on my other monitor. Oh, okay, so look, and, and here we are, you know, getting bolted. So I uh, did bolt our creature. I'm just going to go ahead and play Temple Garden into Voice. Uh, if our opponent is playing Burn, uh, I don't want to... I don't want to... Uh, put myself in a position where I get a. I guess I could just get a, a black white land now and not not play Temple Garden. But I want. I might want to actually have this just get a a uh, a basic. Hmm. I guess if I get I get black white here, and then just play Voice. I can actually play this untapped to the following turn. But I do think I'm going to want black mana from this no matter what. Um, so it's either take basically, eh, yeah, we'll just do this. We can play this tapped potentially in a future turn. So we'll get black, white. We will pay two life, and we'll play voice. So now if our opponent is playing, if he's playing burn, voice is a great card to have him play at this point. Right? Blue, white, red, which potentially what's going on here now. Um, also a great card to have in play. So here um, I can play a second voice, uh, which is actually very, very powerful if my opponent is playing like a controlling deck, which it looks like blue, this is likely blue at red with this, uh, we have Flooded Strand now. Um, so having two voices in play is extremely powerful. Uh, so I think I actually am just gonna do that rather than play like Pride Mage. Uh, it's unlikely that our opponent has something like a uh, anger of the Gods in the main deck. It's more of a cyborg card, so I'm not really worried about getting angered right away. <clears throat> Next turn, I can possibly play like Thought Season of the Pride Mage or uh, Lingering Souls. Oops. No, we don't need that. No, wrong color of mana. So double voice. This is going to make our opponent's life pretty miserable. If they are playing some style of control deck. If we're getting like Remand or something here, we get a voice token, which is fantastic. Remand or Mana Lake? Spell Snare. Alright, well, I will get an Elemental for that. And say go. So this is a really awkward spot for my opponent now. Um, I mean, like, like I said, voice is just so powerful that uh, maybe my opponent's actually playing, like, twin or something like that. All right, well, let's thought season find out. I'm going to thought season into pride mage here is the plan. I'm 
And this also means that we, we can definitely resolve our spell because our opponent is using the using his mana to actually cast the mana leak. This allows us to cast two spells in a turn, which is always like a very high value. If we just cast like lingering souls there, we could just mana leak that. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna cast voice here. Um, I'm leaving. Well, hmm. If my opponent is playing like twin, would I rather cast voice or souls here? If my opponent's gonna counter it, I guess I, I guess I'd rather play play souls. Let's play souls. It's also if we draw a land, it could potentially play voice plus flashback. So. And this this actually represents lethal here, if it resolves. Negate. Oh, okay. I was not expecting a negate there. So my opponent's just have some sort of blue white or blue red, maybe white control deck. Could just be blue red with flooded strand. Alright, well we won. Um, and you know, voice was incredible there. Voice both, uh, voice really just wrecked my opponent completely. So I don't know what's in my opponent's deck other than that he has, uh, he's like he has some sort of blue red control deck. My guess, what is what is going on here? Why is this group creature separately? No, I want group everything together. Why is everything down here now? I don't understand. Okay, well whatever. Um, I do feel like choke is going to be good here. I'm going to bring in a couple of chokes, uh, and I, I think I want to bring in. Thought season and Sorin, perhaps. Sorin is a good uh, a threat that you can cast into an Anger of the Gods, which I like. We didn't see any creatures out of our opponent, so it's possible that we we want to shave a couple of uh, of paths here. Um, we don't know though, so it's hard to hard to really determine. My my guess is that this kind of configuration um, is pretty attractive. We're gonna go ahead and cut one of the fours. Maybe we don't want Sorin. I don't know. Sorin's very good if our opponent is like heavy on. Uh, on removal effects. We're gonna take out, it could be playing like Blue Moon, in which case we definitely want Pride Mage in our deck. I'll take out Finx. I don't know, I don't know how good my Finx, uh, we can actually, maybe we wanna take out one of our mana ramp cards. Yeah, let's take out one mana ramp thing, leave this in. Because if our opponent does have like Anger, we wanna take out some amount of our mana creatures because they're pretty weak. Uh, Finx is also pretty vulnerable to Anger, so I'd rather go ahead and have you know more of the more of the the creatures that survive anger, um, as well as you know the planeswalkers and chokes. So let's give this a shot and see how it goes. All right, this hand is totally reasonable, not amazing, but not bad. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep it. Um, we have turn two voice or pride mage, depending. All right, well there is he, there's a a colonnade. So yeah. He has blue white red and didn't have any white mana, so I like bird into smiter here um, because it plays around any kind of counter magic. Uh, if he bolts this, we get to play a uh, a voice. All right, so yeah, I'm just gonna play smiter. Can't be bolted and uh, can't be countered. Smiter is the truth against this kind of deck, and can't be uh, can't be angered away. It can be pathed. And that looks like it's what's going to be happening. Uh, yes, we will get pathed. I'm going to go get a forest. I think I need. I'd rather have a basic forest here. He, I know he has tectonic edge in his deck, but forest is more important than just like swamp. We still have a bunch of lands that can get swamped if we really need it. Plus we have a township if he does tech edge us. Is he taking damage for this one? He is. Alright, well. Kind of want to open with voice. Um, play a land, play voice. He can't mana leak this. He can spell snare it. But he can't mana leak it. And then I can play Pride Mage after that potentially. 
And if he does, like, anger me, I just follow up with Siege Rhino and then Siege Rhino. What is this? Three blue. It's like a Vendillion click in response to try and get something out of my hand, maybe? Yeah. Me or him? He's clicking me. So, what have we here? can take my Pride Mage and stop me from being able to play another threat this turn. Um, or he can take a Rhino and, you know, prevent the sort of Rhino line from crashing down on him. Choke, by the way, would be an excellent draw here. Neuter's multiple, multiple lands of his. He did take uh, one of the rhinos. Just gonna play this. This leaves give me some, you know, uh, insurance against like a uh, uh, like a, I don't know shackles or something. I'm actually in a position where like I don't even need to play my Rhino. I can like just kind of sit back and wait, play uh, play Bird, and use Township to, to grow my guys. Next turn, if he doesn't, if he just passes, I'm just going to attack with Pride Mage, um, and then I can use Township. And he's bolting my my voice, which is great. Yeah, now I have a whole array of threats. Attacking me for three. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and play Bird. Attack him with these. And activate Township. And this represents like a ton of damage. This is eight damage right now. And like he basically, he, he can only really effectively wrath this board away and then I just play a Siege Rhino. And then he's at six life and I have a Rhino. I can just block this. Like he basically has to wrath here. There's very little, I feel like he's almost certainly gonna wrath. And don't, I don't wanna get potentially like burned out by like some, you know, some weird set of circumstances. So it make my elemental slightly weaker, but <clears throat> but I think that's fine. Oh, he's not actually wrathing. Okay. Oh, there's choke. All right. Well, I'm just going to attack him and uh, I'm just going to attack him for eight. And he's going to have to. He's going to cryptic. Yeah. And then I'm going to choke him, and he loses. Or if it's he's bouncing this and he's tap drawing, okay.
Choke you. Game's over. You get to untap a colonnade at least. <laughs> and there we go. That is the the W for us taking down the Q. Three games, three matches. Uh, so yeah, I think this deck is still very, very strong. Um, we didn't actually even play against, you know, Abzan or Burn in the three rounds that we played. We played against, you know, a variety of decks, uh, Infect, and two different control decks. And, you know, the, the sort of general uh, power level and, and uh, you know, effectiveness of the sort of aggression mixed with disruption that this deck offers, uh, I think is really effective in, you know, against everything but the sort of uh, most dedicated combo style decks. So, yeah, I think you're bad against, like, Scape Shift, Tron, things like that. Um, but they're still beatable because you're you are a deck that puts on you know a lot of pressure uh, combined with the disruption of thought seas. You can really win any, any matchup. Um, so anyway, uh, really happy with this deck. Definitely going to continue tinkering with it and probably taking it to Vancouver. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope perhaps you learned something. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.